What is happening my fellow CK3 gamers? Today I have a little bit of a special video for you guys where I am going to be trying a one county challenge. What does that mean? Simply put, we will be holding one county for the entirety of this game and we will see what we are able to do with it. As for our start, we will be starting in 867. Where we will be playing on the map is none other than Poland. And the reason we are going to be starting in Poland is because of this lovely viewer of the channel who has been leaving comments under my videos for maybe the last couple months asking for some kind of Polish playthrough. And I think this is the perfect challenge for it because in Poland there is the beautiful county of Krakow. And the reason I want to play as Krakow is because now that we are in the game you can see that the capital of Krakow is actually a county that has six barony slots. However, to make this an actual viable playthrough, the first thing we are going to need to do is switch out of the tribal era. To be able to build secondary castles, we will need to have a feudal government, so we're going to have to find a way where we can switch out of tribal as fast as possible. However, the first thing that we are going to do is actually grant away the second holding we have. This means that this person is going to become independent, but that's okay because that's all that we can do in this situation as we are going for a one county challenge only. So as for my big plan to quickly get out of the tribal era, you can see if we wanted to adopt feudal ways right now, it would actually take a really long time because one of the requirements for switching to feudal is actually to have 70% of the military and civic tribal eras unlocked. And if we go look at all of these, you can see we are missing a bunch of them. So that pretty much always takes the longest time. However, there is a way you can actually switch to the tribal era if you are a vassal of a player who is already in the feudal era. So what I'm going to do is actually offer my fealty to this kingdom over here of the Great Moravia. And you can see right now they will not accept our fealty because we are of a different faith. So the first thing that we are going to do, I said that a lot, is set up a marriage. And for this marriage, we're going to look for somebody who has the fecund trait and also somebody who's pretty young because we want to have a lot of kids. Since we will only be holding one county this entire game, our succession really doesn't matter. Our land will always get passed down to our oldest heir. So I want to have as many as possible to ship the other ones out in order to gain us some nice renown. So now that we set up this marriage, you see if I press play, we should get a nice pop-up here. Perfect. And you can see this pop-up gets us 75 gold for our wedding from gifts. And then with that 75 gold, we can go right ahead and go on a pilgrimage. Okay, so I just returned from my pilgrimage and you can now see I have 350 piety meaning if I go over here I can switch over to Catholicism so this is going to help me become um, a vassal of the Great Moravia which you can see I can go ahead and do that right then but what it will also do is we can now demand for money from the Pope whenever we have enough piety to do so. And that's gonna be a great way of getting a quick cash infusion so we can use it on developing our land. However, now that we are um, the vassal of a feudal realm, you can see we can now adopt feudal ways through our liege. And this only costs 150 prestige and we need to have just the second tier of crown authority. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass that. And then I'm just gonna wait a little bit until we hit 150. So just like that, you see this pop-up comes up and we can adopt fuel rays already only about six months after the game started. Hey, that's pretty good. And you can see we now have a castle holding and two um, other baronies, which are the temple and the city. When we get enough money, we can go ahead and build another castle right away over here. They're going to cost 400 gold each, but I do plan on picking up some of these perks in the architect tree to lower that price just a little bit. The other thing we're going to want to do with our money is actually invest into these two buildings, the farms and fields and the manor house. These will both allow us to make a really a pretty healthy amount of income just with one castle holding. However, I will have to be wary because we are pretty weak, so we won't really be able to defend against people coming to raid us. And I know all of these guys around us really enjoy raiding us. And literally right when I say that, you can see we are getting raided from our northern neighbors here. The problem that happens when we get raided is not only does it lower our control, but what it does is give us this recently looted debuff, which reduces our taxes by 50%. And that is just really brutal because this is our only way of making money. 
I gotta say the Pope has to appreciate if we start complimenting him on his unshakable faith in God. Like surely that's gonna get him on our side. Denied. Nani? Surprise, motherfucker. At least we were able to defend against this group of raiders. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so we finally have enough opinion with the Pope to be able to ask for money, and that will get us another 100 gold. And we can already get started on making our second castle. And we'll construct it right over here because I think... If we have men standing on this tile, we'll be able to get bonuses from defending across rivers if people come and attack us from um, any of these areas. And now with any money that we make, I'm going to put it into developing um, the, the buildings in my capital here. Okay, so we successfully built our moat here and you can see our gold increased a little bit. We're now making 1.6 per month. But the other thing that is pretty important about this is that it actually raises our troop number because we get another almost 200 levies from holding this. So you'll notice I'm making a whopping 3.2 gold per month now, just 22 years after the game started because we have built our farms and fields over here and we actually have enough money to build our manor houses which are going to net us another 0.7. And we did go ahead and build a hunter's lodge over here. And I'm going to be building these all over in our land because as a Polish character, we have access to the Kony, which are a special type of light infantry unit, which are absolutely sick. They have more damage and pursuit compared to your normal light infantry. So we are going to want to try to boost these guys in our realm everywhere we can by building these hunting grounds, which you can see have a great effect on our light cavalry damage and toughness. We're pretty much going to be the horse lords of Poland running around with a ton of cavalry units and killing all of our enemies like these guys who I'm pretty sure are on their way to raid me. And of course they are. I really don't want to play as this daughter because she has the paranoid trait and this is such a pain for recruiting people to your court. Anytime you try to get a new person in your court you get a ton of stress. So really all her traits are pretty shitty. It might have been because she was tortured while she was uh, taken prisoner by these guys up here. Or maybe it was these guys over here. Either way, I'm pretty much set to murder all three of these guys once I become very powerful. So I started going down the intrigue tree just a little bit. And I think it's about time I start exacting some revenge. And first on the list is this guy who tortured my daughter. And we actually have a 95% chance um, of this murder scheme going, if, going through even if we don't do anything. Oh, great heavens! Gotcha, bitch! I raised my army here to defend against these raiders just in time. Thank goodness. And let's see if we can actually murder this guy over here. And it looks like we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yeah. Okay, so this is pretty huge. First of all, my daughter I wanted to, who I wanted to play has just died, so it looks like we're going to have to play as this daughter who's a lunatic and irritable, paranoid and shy, so that's going to be just an awful life ahead of us. You'll see that our gold income is almost at 6 gold per month, and that's because our, uh, new, our newer liege just named us as the steward of the Great Moravia, and our new liege, by the way, is a 2-year-old. Uh, we actually died, so... You know, that's okay. Oh my goodness, our character is already so stressed. However, we do have at least enough money. I'm going to build this regimental grounds because it gives us 150 levies, which is a pretty big increase. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, because we are a lunatic, we actually got this decision over here to build a glass monument. So I'm going to really try to get the distinguished level of fame because we need to do that. So let's just go up one level and then have 100 and 10 gold and we can get the glass monument okay so we managed to get enough prestige so now we can go ahead and get the glass monument wow. and let's see oh it's actually pretty cool it's actually pretty good too it gives you a whole plus one gold per month at the cost of 110 gold that's a really good deal um and a huge bonus to your development growth wow and a bonus of plus one prestige and a uh, small booth your house. This is actually a very, very good building. I'm actually really happy I played as this lunatic character to be able to get it now. Okay, so it's been a little bit of time and you can see I am now building my third 
um, secondary castle over here. So that's going to help a lot in getting us some more men and gold. However, to really start this game and kick it off, what we need is to either hold a duchy or higher so that we can start taking land that's around us from these weak neighbors and then granting it away without it becoming independent. One way we could do this is I went over to the stewardship tree in order to pick up this perk right here, which lets us claim the th throne of our liege. So now if we go over to our king and under hostile, you can see we have this new scheme to claim throne. So we're going to get this started. However, to be able to claim the throne, we will have to have a stronger military than him. And right now we're pretty even. However, the problem is he has a pretty strong ally who would definitely tip the favors in um, for him in this war. What I plan on doing is after we're done claiming the throne, we should be able to run a murder scheme on him, leaving his young daughter in charge. And we have a 45% chance that it goes through with no other benefits because we did go down the intrigue tree a little bit. And we should be able to invent, invite some lovely people to help us here. So like the queen, we can actually invite her. And now our scheme should be at 95-95, meaning it should go through without any problems. And we also completed our third castle. So now we actually have three holdings. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get this guy killed. And it did not go through, unfortunately for us. So I'll just run another one and hopefully this time it'll work. Okay, and here we go with the murder scheme again. This time it better go through. And it looks like it did. So now you can see we have a new liege who is um, a six-year-old girl with no allies at all. So what we will do is go over here to factions and we will create a claimant faction with us as the benefactor. So in just eight months, we will be able to press our claims. Okay, so we're ready to press our demand. So we'll go ahead and do it. Ready. Fight! And war it is. I have my ally who I can call into the war if I need. They do have way more men at arms than me, so that's a little bit concerning. Okay, so we are um about to die because our character has quite a few negative health traits here. Okay, so we're taking their capital and we should have this captured before they are able to take our capital, which I don't think would bring us to 100% war score. Got it. Oh, and it actually does because we get capture um, the queen. So here we go. If we enforce our demands here, you'll see that notification right there that we are now a mighty queen and we own the kingdom of the Great Moravia. Now it is now our kingdom. Now we're going to be getting a ton of men as tax from our from our vassals. So we're going to get a little bit of gold and a little bit of um, manpower from our vassals and that's going to help us a ton in this game and the son that we're going to play as next actually looks like a pretty decent character um definitely not the best by any means but could be a lot worse okay so it happened we our character has died uh, she actually lived to 52 which is pretty good considering all the bad traits that she had and now we are playing as her son so if you were paying attention you would have noticed that our son actually got changed to the french culture when when we had shipped his mom over there um however we do want to remain polish that's kind of like the whole point of this game is to be part of the polish culture for our boy so what you can actually do is as long as your capital is still of your the culture that you had since the start of the game you can always do this decision right over here which is convert to local culture and it just costs um 300 uh, prestige French is probably a, a better culture tech wise, but you know, we, we're trying to do our own thing over here. We don't want to be a French ruler. So our troop number is going up quite nicely. We now have above 2000 troops, which we can have. Um, we also have the first crusade for Jerusalem was just declared. So I'm definitely going to try to raise some of my troops to send them in there. Also, I just hit enough money to be able to build my my fourth and final castle here so we're gonna go ahead and start that so once i finish this castle that will be all the holdings that we can hold this entire game we'll have four castles in the crusades terms it looks like we have more men than the um, muslim defenders so we should technically win this crusade as long as the pope doesn't do any brainless moves a few moments later so that was a very fast crusade it looks like we already lost we have just finished building our fourth and final castle here and you can see it brings our troops up to above 3,000. I am so happy to finally be gaining some strength here. 
but it looks like Greater Poland, which is now a kingdom on its own, is actually becoming pretty strong as well. And we did have some big news in the uh, kingdom of Greater Poland. The person died, meaning there's now a six-year-old in charge, and they are pretty weak with no alliances, so I'm going to try to take some land from them in the near future. But more importantly, these guys to our east, who have been pestering us the entire game, also died, meaning there's an 11-year-old girl in charge there. And since they are actually a different faith than us, we can declare a war on the county, meaning we would get all of this land here for just the low, low price of 160 piety. And of course, they were able to buy some mercenaries or something. Yeah, they bought some mercenaries over here. Oh, and we we're actually able to catch the mercenaries out alone, which is pretty huge. So we should be able to catch their big main stack over here in our capital, which means we'll get some nice defensive bonus from the buildings that we have there. And look at that. It looks like we were able to actually beat these guys even with their mercenaries joining in. Perfect, and we actually captured her as well, meaning we get 100% war score right away. And now our troops should replenish to 3,500, so we're moving up over here in the world. Now I turn my eyes to Poland, where I see they're having an absolute horrid time over here. They're defending against a war, tyranny war, with some of their vassals. And they have 5,000 men, and then they are also defending against... A war with Bavaria who look like they're trying to take a piece of them as well so I think it is actually the perfect time for us to declare war on them for this duchy right here that splits our two lands so this will help me at least with the border gore which is kind of offending me right now so my heir actually died in battle but it turns out that's actually okay because our second son has the genius trait and look at these stats he looks like he's gonna be amazing to play as we should be able to do a ton of conquering with him Okay, so this war turned into a complete shit show in Poland. It was like a battle of who can call in more allies. It started out just 3,000 versus 3,000, and then at the height of the war, we had 12k troops and they had 12k troops, but we whittled them down with the help of our French allies. We actually called in the whole kingdom of France into this war, and now you can see we finally hit 100% war score. This one was very challenging. I am just thankful it is over, I'll tell you that much. And I'll try to find somebody who has good perks. Like this guy is content, which is a pretty good perk because it's less likely he's going to um, rise up against us because you can see he has this plus 20 opinion with his liege. So you know what? I'm just going to give him the land. <coughs> you can see we are earning 8.1 gold per month now with all of our land. Nani? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. These raiders almost got my capital. So we finally have enough um, relationship with this guy over here we are where we can go and offer him vassalage for low feudal obligations. And you'll see just like that we got all of this beautiful land into our control without having to do any wars. And it looks like there's another guy over here we can offer vassalage to. Excellent. You'll see I'm going to have a big penalty because I've been doing a lot of wars recently. So I think I'll take um, a few years of peace so that this offensive war modifier can kind of drop down. So I just got another tax refund from the Pope and with it I'm going to continue to upgrade all the buildings in my realm. Putting a particular emphasis on the hunting grounds because we do want our horses to be extra strong. Um, with one of the perks, the military perks I picked up, it actually bumps their pursuit up to 78, which is actually mental. Alright, so we finally died, and this is actually a good news for us because we are now playing as our amazing son. So we also have a faction that um, is rising here for this lady to be in charge of the Moravian throne. For right now, we can set up a quick um, alliance with her through marriage with our half-brother, and I don't even know, one of her daughters or something that will disband the faction as you see there. We will have a peasant faction that's gonna rise up as well, but I don't think those guys will be very hard to deal with. And here they come. And that should be that for factions. So now we're pretty much chilling as our new character. If we actually check the development in the map, you can see Krakow, which we have been developing since the beginning of the game, already has 18 development. And if you look around the map, Rome has 30, so we are actually pretty close to some of the highest places in the entire map. I'll pick up these three perks for the stewardship tree, and then I'll switch right over to the scholarship focus because I want to max out this player's learning 
and pick up some of these perks to help me do research faster because right now we aren't the culture head it is the queen of greater poland if i just take like two or three more lands i will be the culture head meaning i will determine how fast we research things okay it looks like greater poland wants another war oh, great heavens. we will have to call all of our allies into this war um okay i did not expect this so we had uh, a kid here and we got this pop-up and it looks like it says my sister has given birth to a son and we know I am the father. And then I hovered over my sister and you can see it says our sister and lover. What? It looks like our sister is our soulmate in this game, which, um, how come it always happens whenever you have an amazing character, there's always some weird thing going on with them. Silence, Wedge. I do not wish to be horny anymore. I just want to be happy. And we are waiting for France to come in here to help in this war, but look, they have a lot of troops in our lands. So we just got into a battle over here with the enemies, and you can see we had 9,000, they had 13,000, and we may have lost the battle, but look at how many damages we did. So we killed 4,000 men, and we only lost 3,000. So even though technically we lost this battle, I would argue that... We came out on top. Okay, so I jumped on one of the stacks of enemies over here, and now we are in a very crucial battle. You can see it is pretty much even. We came in with just a little bit less men, and we need to see some big numbers here in order to turn this battle in our favor. Okay, come on, these are huge. So the reason we are actually winning um, in terms of this battle modifier is mainly because our commander is super good. Like they have a 20 commander ability and they only have 12. So that's giving us a plus eight over them at all times. And then the other thing that makes these guys tough is the fact that they're tribal, so they always get this unreformed pagan combat advantage. And look at that, that's a huge win as well, actually. If we look at the troop totals, we should see that we actually now have more men than them. So we keep we keep catching their army pretty split up now, and they are losing troops quite fast. I have to really thank my French allies, they're actually helping so much in this war. Without them, there's no chance we would have been able to win. So we're going to get 169 gold from this actually, which is pretty solid. So unfortunately, the Queen of Greater Poland um, made a few alliances. So now she's a bit too strong if we were to declare war against her. One thing I can do is actually run a murder scheme on her and take a look. There's a guy down here we can convince with 68 gold to join. And now look at that. We actually brought the percentage up to 88% with a 95% secrecy. And it looks like we successfully killed her. We did become stressed because of it. And I guess becoming reclusive isn't the worst thing. So now if we look at Poland, there should be just a 13 year old in charge and they have only one ally and their ally is their own vassal. So they won't be able to help them in the war. So I think we should be able to take them. And worst case, we can always call in some extra allies like France. So we'll go ahead and get the war started for the, uh, the Duchy of Greater Poland. So I caught half their army here and their other half is actually running the wrong way. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? So we should get a very nice victory here. So we chase them over here to the mountains and you can see um, if we were to attack them in the mountains, it says the chances are even, but they have a huge bonus from defending in mountains. So I'm not going to risk attacking them here. And instead, I'm just going to wait them out because we actually will be gaining um, supplies on this tile and they would be losing it because they don't have enough supplies. So it's going to force them to retreat even further, as you can see. And it looks like they're trying to do some kind of ring around the rosy technique. And we will be able to catch them here, which I have to say is a much better favorable battle for us because their supplies have run to low, meaning they get a minus 10 in their battle modifier. Okay, and in a battle in the capital, it looks like we captured the king of Greater Poland, meaning we can now enforce our demands. Oh, so if I send a gift to this guy over here, we'll actually be able to vassalize him. So I think I will do that. Um, the 100 gold, pretty worth it, I would say. Hello there. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. So I just hit 500 gold, and the reason that is important is because if we go to kingdoms, you can see we have enough land to create the kingdom of Poland. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we will, of course, be making this our primary title. And now look at this. We are the true um, Polish kingdom over here. Don't pay attention to this shitty um, Greater Poland kingdom, which is falling apart. Kingdom of Greater Poland, more like the kingdom of lesser Poland. 
yeah, it looks like they're getting a bunch of wars declared on them. Even my vassals are getting in on the mix, which I'm a huge fan of. We have just finished um, another building in one of our four castles here, and you can now see that our castles are completely upgraded with every building they possibly could have. So now we're just waiting on our techs, really. Um, getting barracks is going to help because that will let me upgrade the military buildings, but then we'll have to wait until we get into the early medieval era so we can upgrade to tier 2 castles. And we are now making 12.6 gold per month with a pretty sizable military. We maxed out all of our horses because of course these are our main killing force. So I think as a last hurrah for this character because he is 53 years old, I'm going to declare war on Great Poland, Greater Poland again, this time for this duchy here. It should do quite a good job of putting them pretty much out of contention completely. We just hit 100% war score. Yoink. It was quite an easy war, and if you look at Poland, we left them with only 136 troops. So I definitely think they will be getting invaded by all of their by all of their neighbors. So it's been a few years, and I hope our character is near death, but he's getting some good health uh, benefits here. So he might still be a ways away from dying, but I have just been saving up our gold. You can see we have 3,000 gold now because there's really nothing I can do to upgrade our uh, castles in our land until I unlock some of these innovations over here so that I can get secondary castles and then in turn start upgrading all of our buildings. Also, when we do die, um, you'll see that we'll actually are going to lose the Kingdom of Great Moravia, which is what you see highlighted here to one of our sons. I don't have a problem with that because um, it's not really a lot of land that we're going to lose, and it's going to net us a huge amount of renown. It should almost double it because we should have two kings instead of just having one king. So my character, as my character is almost going to die, I think we should go ahead and use our Holy Warfare Kingdom because you can only do one of these per lifetime. And I think I'm going to do it over here on this um, kingdom because they have been a pain in my ass a lot of the game of allying a lot of these people nearby. So I ran my troops back into my own ter territory to replenish their supplies. If I were to attack these guys with low supplies, I would have definitely lost the battle. You'll see now we should get a victory here because they actually have low supplies and we get a defensive bonus from fighting on a tile with hills, which will go in our, in our favor here. Yeah, you can see we get a plus five for being on hills and they get a minus 10 for having low supplies, which pretty much guarantees us a win right here. And a pretty big win at that, considering they had 5,000 men in this army. So we killed almost 3,000. Let's get the details. And look at this. Our horses are finally paying off. We managed to kill 1,000 men and only lose 87 horses in this battle. This is mainly because of the pursuit phase, which you can see here. So if you guys actually don't know this, the pursuit stat affects how many casualties you get for the enemy army after you won a battle. And the screen kind of is the opposite of pursuit, as in if you lose a battle, the higher your screen stat, the less casualties you will lose while retreating. It's pretty much after any battle, there is a retreat phase, and that's where these two stats come into play. By having 700 horses with almost 80 pursuit, we are able to kill, you can see in the pursuit phase, 800 men, which is really making the biggest difference in these losses. And just like that, we hit 100% war score. Yoink! Okay, so we finally kicked the bucket. So now we are playing as our son, and the only problem I see with our son is that he only has one kid right now, and um, it's probably because our wife is quite old. So we might work on divorcing her in some time, because I do want to have a lot of kids here. Remember, our succession doesn't really matter because we'll always hold all of our count counties personally. Wow, I thought it was going to be a smaller piece of land that split off of us with the Great Moravia. Hmm, okay, so it looks like I can actually declare war on my brother. It's so funny, my brother looks exactly the same as us. Because you can see he did also get the um, Kingdom of Great Poland. I guess I wasn't paying attention and that also got passed down on succession to him. Which I was okay with him getting the Kingdom of Great Moravia, but not also the Kingdom of Poland, of Great Poland. So I will declare war on him for that. It's only, um, because I have claims on it, it's only 150 prestige do that you can stay a king meaning we'll still get this lovely um plus one to our renown but we will instead get all this land back which is going to help because right now we aren't the culture head and i really want to be the culture head. that's the whole point of us having a uh, high learning 
Okay, so we just captured our uh, brother, which is perfect because now we can enforce our demands and we at least get this lovely kingdom back under control. It looks like he doesn't want to be my friend after that war, which is kind of understandable, but maybe in the future we can be friends. So unfortunately, it looks like the only way that we can get rid of our wife is to run a murder scheme on her. I kind of feel bad, like she's pretty, uh, she's a pretty cool character and she is her best friend. Oh man, this, this kind of hurts, but you know, you got to do what you got to do for the good of the realm. And I need to have a lot more kids than we have right now. Oh, and look, so our brother has turned around and now wants to enter a mutual alliance with us which is awesome because like I was saying before, now we get to protect them if anybody tries to declare war against them and we get to make sure that our renown stays at plus 2.4. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can kill our wife and it looks like we did. Um, and we'll try to find a new wife with some good traits, of course. <laughs> uh, this is just, this is just the, the one of the best traits in the game, I have to say. So I'm going to try to find somebody with intelligent because I do want to um, upgrade our intelligent trait. And this lady seems fine. We only lose 100 prestige from the marriage. So we'll take that. I will also be switching over to stewardship now that we have filled this whole scholar tree because I do want to um, get these perks again because we are going to be building our secondary castles soon in about 17 years so getting the the discount uh, of speed and gold is going to be huge for us on that it's going to save us a lot of money so i've been taking a little bit more land and i think it's about time we do a classic quadruple war here so i'm just going to declare war on all these small counties now this might be a bit more than i can chew but we'll see what happens Just like that, we have won all five of those wars. Okay, so we finally finished researching battlements, so we can now go ahead, go into all of our castles, and pay the 522 gold to upgrade them to tier 2 castles. And we have been saving our money for this, so we can actually do it in all four of our castles at once. And it's only going to take 40 minutes, uh, it's only going to take 14 months because we have, we have the stewardship perk. And just like that, we finished constructing all four of the keeps. And now look how beautiful this land is. So I went in here and I actually changed the um, some of the buildings to the forts ones because I love the way the walls looked and the previous walls were not. I wasn't feeling it, you know, but I think this is a perfect place to end the video on our beautiful one county uh, kingdom. We have done quite a good job as Poland, starting from just one county and holding one county personally the entire game. It was actually quite a fun challenge to do. I highly recommend it if you find some more counties that have a lot of slots for you to build secondary castles. Uh, you can see we are now making 14 gold per month, have over 10,000 troops and just with four holdings and one county. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.